20 years after 9-11, the nation will pause to remember tomorrow. Yeah. Survivors will reflect on how they, the nation, and the world have changed in two decades. And CBS 2's Bradley Blackburn joins us live from Lower Manhattan with more on this story. Bradley, good morning to you. Marco, Suzanne, good morning. We are just above what was ground zero and 20 years of changes have played out right here. You can see it in the new World Trade Center tower over my shoulder in the Memorial Park behind me and the museum. But 20 years on, there is also an entire generation that has no personal history of 9-11. So it is even more important to hear the stories of survivors who lived history right here. 20 years after the September 11th attacks, the world will pause to reflect and remember, but Paul Conlon lives with the memory every single day. Uh, there is something about anniversaries that, I, mean, I guess, focus it. You do remember it a little more. Conlon was an FDNY captain on 9-11, one of the first responders who converged on Lower Manhattan after the attack. His crew was moving towards the burning buildings when one of his men was killed just before the South Tower came down. It was just a, a matter of, you know, uh, you know, running and not really knowing uh, what was collapsing. Or. Conlon wrote a book about his fallen colleague, Daniel Sir, who he credits with saving 11 lives, including his own. He's seen his children grow up and now his grandchildren. Since retiring from the fire department, he's worked with the 9-11 Tribute Museum, an institution focused on the day's personal histories. All we're trying to do is pay tribute by remembering. Nearly 3,000 people were killed on 9-11, making it the deadliest foreign attack on U.S. soil. And guys, we have talked about how this is also a final resting place for many of those victims. The medical examiner's office here in New York keeps unidentified remains at the World Trade Center site right at the footprints of the towers. And they continue to use new DNA technology to try and identify those remains. And just this week, they were able to identify two more victims. DeMarco. Oh, my. All right, Bradley, uh, before you go, how has the withdrawal from Afghanistan affected survivors and family members? Well, we understand uh, from several survivors that this is on their minds. This was already going to be an enormous anniversary. And to have, an, uh, have Afghanistan in the news so much over the last month has been uh, powerful for them, has had an effect. Uh, one survivor that we spoke with who lost his wife in Flight 93 uh, told us that he hopes that this anniversary is a moment for people to set aside their political divisions uh, and, and really focus on, on healing as a country coming together. That is something we will be looking for at the ceremony here tomorrow. Again, phenomenal reporting this entire morning. Uh, Bradley Blackburn reporting live from Lower Manhattan. Bradley, thank you.